afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane Master, propaganda here of Psych, defender of the fatherland. We're off here to an exciting one versus one on crossroads between the South. We got Red Garden Free fighting for the Orbital Commander West for Deutschland, forming up here the 111th Panzer Brigade, tasked with clearing out Patton's chaps here under the command of Major Sturmgeist. Fighting for America, freedom, liberty, and the American way here, rolling ahead with the 1st Armored Division. We've got here Special Operations, Breakthrough, and Luftwaffe Ground Forces. With Panzer Fusilier, Flak Half Track, and Sturm Panzer Bulletins versus Heavy Cavalry, Airborne, and Armor Company with three infantry bulletins there available for Sturm Geist. Who's also noting, by the way, going straight for the munitions first. Could indicate he's planning something with a lot of munitions sort of off the bat here. Quick wire here as he's sort of moving up the west. So there'll probably be an early clash here between the two players as all of them are basically, or both of them. This, I mean, yeah, all of them, sure, technically it's applicable, but it sort of gives the indication there's more than they actually are. Both of them are aiming for the cemetery. So that's going to be a clash there, whereas the lumber yard down south is basically seeing no attention. I mean, what's not as cool as, you know, tombstones? I guess perhaps both players are a bit goth. Anyway, Stu and Pipes moving up, they're now holding up here behind the wreckage of a Stug. Poor Stug. Stu and Pipes are advancing on the right and up close here, they will have the advantage here. And there we go, moving up right and they will have to fall back. Probably in this case, maybe your storm guys should have actually made preparation to pull back there further away there instead of just trying to take up there where the storm punnies easily could have made, you know, quick gains there because it's not like there's a huge distance between here and there. So, a bit of an unfortunate tactical decision there by storm guys. They're really being flanked by the storm punnies over here. Red Garden is going to be making the first wins here for the 111th Panzer Brigade with more folks on the way for Red Garden 3. Third half score on the way there for Stormgeist. And the south points there being grabbed. And there you go, got a bit of movement eastwards, well perhaps not quite keen on charging in to Red Garden 3 here, who's actually going to move down to finish the sandbags here, overall creating his point here that's a bit harder for the Americans to take. Good defensive preparation work there by Red Garden 3 by the way. Kuppelwagen moving eastwards there for Germany. So Ludwig, have you heard about these new Schwimmwagens? They're not new, they've been out for months, but we just heard about them. Well, you know, you're a bit slow, Ludwig. You're a bit slow. Yeah, I know, Ludwig. How funny we both call Ludwig. Yeah, I know. Not really. Belgroup head, or half track on the way, will be Belgroup headquarters, will be Mechanized Regiment. I mean, he does have flat half track bulletins. So he could go for it. That will always not really something I recommend. You say catching a Volkswagen Sport out in the open. No tech up there yet for Sturmgast down here. The rifle looks like trying to catch, but the Kuban is doing some damage here with this MD-34. West here is being lost here as we've got a fresh surge there from Sturmgast and North Sturmpani. It's a bit of a bad position, actually. I mean, their cough point or retreat path is threatened by the rifleman, and there's a small chance of a wipe there. Kuban is going to have to fall back. It's just not doing enough here on its own versus the rifle squad, even as the rifle now out in the open there. Or is there some kind of cover here? Seems like this slight dent in the ground is somehow forming up like cover. My god, Jürgen, so slightly lower than usual. I just can't seem to hit some, Ludwig. Just can't seem to hit some. Mortar out there for my Sturm, guys. There's a price there. Again, it's pretty much the standard American build order. Three riflemen, mortar, captain. Steward, uh, maybe an ambulance after the captain, maybe after the steward. There you go, seizing the fuel point. I mean, overall, Red Gun Strand, you have seemed to be, you know, trying to sort of cut down both fuel points that way, slowing down Stormgeist's tech sort of training there towards the Stuart Light Tank. And so far, it's not quite able to exert map control properly, which is a bit unfortunate. I think a bit too quick to shift towards the center, not leaving anything to really defend the points here. No mines either. Well, we got an ME-34 on the way. They could also, I think, consider some assault rifles for his folks. Kind of these increasing their firepower versus those evil, evil Yankees. Rifle and they're making their back for reinforcement. Mortar shifting about there a bit. Lugging that heavy thing about there. Heavy-ish. Mines down there. So we got heavy cavalry. He actually makes use of the mines. A rare sight there. I mean, most American players at the moment they go for heavy cavalry again. Tend to go to only for the Pershing. I mean, for most players, they might as well just say Pershing Doctrine. There you go, fighting around here. In this case, the Americans might just be able to hit the cover there, which in this angle actually works out for them. But there you go, MD-34 flanking out there. Good work. Should have to press the match of moments, and there we go. Rough Fox can just up. There we go, Mortify Ring down there. Kills Otto. Being in quite a broken mess there on the ground. And meanwhile, fresh push up here on the eastern side of Rifle. Yes, runs. we got Sandbags going up here. And there's a chase. Well, I don't think there's really much need for it. I mean, well, I suppose it would give him heavy cover. There's none. 
I mean, overall, it's nice to see actually someone make use of the Samax again. It's sort of a you know, thing most players neglect. They have got incendiary grenade, turning that place into a pretty horrid place to be for any unit. Forces are pushed back by Rifle and the Mortar there, forming a nice little combo. Troops there pushed back. It's the Sturm Pioneer flank in there from Red Garden's forces. Well, good work. Captain out there for Stormgeist. Going for the Bazooka as well. Pretty standard stuff there. But Ken from the way for Red Garden, obviously expecting the Stuart Light tank. And at this point, I mean, it's just not really a huge surprise if your opponent goes for the steward. I mean, Lieutenant and a bunch of 50 cows will probably give Red Garden more of a shock there, really, to be honest. Mines down there, possibly to sort of help catch up the steward, making an easy target, or was just slow down Sturmgeist's advances. Ready to execute. Need to grab the victory point there as well soon ish. Mm, still on the sign of upgrades. Oh, there we go. Assault rifles on the way there for the full scanner dealer. Cool one has to fall away. Rifleman Captain VS and advancing. Good hit on the cool one there from the bazooka. Yeah, good thing we stored all the sauerkraut there. Otherwise, we would have been dead. Yeah, but now the sauerkraut's gone. It was from my mother. I mean, she's thankfully still alive, but you know, it was good sauerkraut. Rather than they're grabbing the victory point in the center, Rifle Mortar moving up, stood on the way there, mine goes off, killing. The captain was actually quite lucky there. I got a good feeling about this, Jones. Move up ahead. Don't worry. Boom. <laughs> Fuck you, Jones. Did you say something, Captain? No, no. Poor you, Jones. Poor you. Yeah. Anyway, stood halfway on the way there. Rifle moving up. Vision swap. But this is not really a good engagement here for Red Garden. Well, not Red Garden, but Stormgeist. Not really a lot of cover. And we got a lot of German infantry here. Seems like Red Garden has given up on the West for the time being, except he's still leaving his MD-34 there for some reason then. Instead of using it to support his main force. That seems a bit strange, to be honest, by Red Garden. Seems a bit strange there. Still almost down there for Sturmgeist. Going there for the cutoff point. Sturm Pioneer on the way there for Redgar. So he's actually going for more Sturm Pioneers. Bit of rare sight again. Most plays just don't factor in a lot of Sturm Pioneers. But also, he needs to spread out for you. Spread out. Tactical spread there so he doesn't become an easy target there for the American Mortar. Because the last thing you want to do is make it easier for that monster. There we go. M5A1 stood around there for Sturmgeist. A bit of cavalry charging in there. Deal with them damn crowds. There it goes, Storm Pies quickly breaking into retreat there. Fox goes into retreat as well. It seems like here Red Garden is feeling pretty confident his chances not to get insta wiped there by this menacing tiny tank. At the same time, because he's locked down here, the cutoff point. Good play there by Storm Guys, actually getting behind his lines there and uh, cutting off the resources. Sharp play there by Storm Guys, sharp play. Ambulance are following up here for Storm Guys and the first armored. Another trot on the way there for Red Garden. Will it be mechanized? Will he actually try and play for the Schwer Punch at quarters? Timing wise, you can see how much fully got. It seems Looks like mechanized, maybe a puma here for Red Garden. Kubelwag, no, seems dead. And no sauerkraut this time, we'll save it. Yep, down. Panzerfaust there in the Stuart from the Volkswagen Israel, is bringing from the north. Rifle there getting gunned down by the Sturm Pioneers, and there you go, forced to retreat. Ambulance out there for Sturmgeist. Red Garden is yet to choose a doctrine here. Get to make any overt moves towards anything. Still coming back here with the damaged engine. Mortising up here behind the house. Should be able to cover most of the centre here. Rifle seeing up the eastern side. Good work. There. Now again, I can't help but feel like he's forgotten this MD-34. And it's not really you know, something he wants to forget. I mean, it would do him a lot more good if he was using it to actually support his infantry against Stormgeist's troops. I mean, that would do him a lot more good than just covering here, which... At this point, it doesn't really matter a lot there compared to the terrain around here. For example, had the MD-34 here, he wouldn't have been cut off. But mine's down the cough, at least from the Red Garden. Good. Another MD-34, despite not really using the first one. And of course, with double storm pioneers out, I think at least getting one pantry check up on them would be a very, very solid choice. But at the same time, fresh push up here on the right side, even as the steward sort of pushes up the west here. Double push from Sturmgeist. A bit risky, but... Uh, with the steward at the moment, and no real counters to it, he should be at least safe on the western side. There's Mortar, isn't really able, I think, to sort of properly support any of the pushes. MD-34 moving up the sort of push against here, at least assist in it. Stuart Pani is leading the way. MD-34, I think, needs to set up a bit better to sort of assist with it. I think there's a bit too much in the way there. Oh, never mind. Seems to work out there nicely, but uh, a few more troops supporting would be good. Morik heading there for stay. He's sort of preparing there for the steward to advance. Sort of must mess it up here. Fed for advancing, okay, please get up there, go Stuart moving in. 
looking for some targets there. And there he goes, shoots an empty fed four. Krupp misses. Fultz gun leads the moving up. In the west, we've got a fresh counter attack here with Fultz gun leads an empty fed four. Second look, Kedmaf out there for red card. Looks like he's planning the Shriar Panzer to Porter since he really gone for the Mechanized by now. So, I guess that Fultz gun with a Panzer Faust. So, I've been cut down here. Kedmaf moving up. Panzer Faust off there. And. Jorkin gets it off, damaging the enemy. We got a smoke screen down here to cover up the retreat there for Sturm, guys. Good play there, also covers the retreat of his men, minimizing casualties there. Good sort of, uh, well, covered retreat there by Sturm, guys. Good work. Taking no chances there. Sturm has moving up, being gated by the captain from inside the house there. Oh, get the captain, actually. That cut out a major source of damage there, really. No Thompson then. That makes it a lot easier for the Sturm pilots. Enemy for setting up there as well by the cough point. And with the suit out for a bit, that should allow the Germans to push forward and grab points. points. But, um, still no Patrick, except we're going to mine down here. I mean, the cheaper mines do work nicely there as a suit, since you can lay just out a bunch of them. And if the suit just hits one, you've got a chance of them sort of hitting it and killing it. Troops heal, reinforcing there. They do have healing as well. It looks like he's finally planted the spare punted quarters. About his car point there, which isn't a half bad idea. Plus, the way this set is up in the right place, it won't be too exposed either. I'm not entirely sure if I'm a fan of this setup. I mean, it just risk making it a lot harder for vehicles to move through here. I mean, that's a pretty poor parking job. I'm pretty sure that's against their amount of regulations here to park in the middle of a bloody road like that. I mean, good thing the military police isn't around because I'm pretty sure they give Red Garden a good beating. Meanwhile, though, we actually got Rangers out here, Storm guys. We actually got bazookas and BRs on the rifle. Interesting, interesting. Very interesting. But he's clearly preparing for some kind of equal play there from uh, Red Garden. But at the same time, of course, also pressing the infantry harder. And so the Rangers in that department, once upgraded, can very well push infantry. Stuart moves ahead. Straight into the mine. Oh, dear. Time for the Kedmaf to do its job. And there he goes. Stuart almost down. Heavy engine damage. MD-34 finding away. And gets to Stuart there. Nice setup there for Red Garden. And that's a huge threat there for him. Down. Good work. Good work. More mines here. He really loves laying down mines here. And that's good work here again. And in this case, it's really paid off there for Red Garden. It has really paid off there. In the west, right from train here to the MD-34. Storm punch as well there. Trying to get into heavy cover. I think some pressed there with the MD-34 first. Should allow the storm punch to close in. Finish off the job there for Germany. Rangers moving up there. Not yet with upgrades. But they could move up here and flank with a grenade here. Specifically a cooked one. Meanwhile, here in the east, John Pioneer's forces is catching up against the rifle squad. Any good forces poorly, but nonetheless, this is an engagement one there by Red Garden. Three. Not to be mistaken with Red Garden two or one. Red Garden one in particular hates being mistaken with Red Garden three. I don't know. Actually, anyways, Rangers there catching up with M1 carbines. They go cutting down the MP34 crew. Quickly. Also, a mine to cover the retreat here. I mean, he's really taking no chance bets to do any other vehicles. There we go. Thompson's all the way for the Rangers. A bit of increased firepower there. Fun fact, they actually tried to make a cheaper version of the Thompson. In fact, sort of make two prototypes for it. But when they finally then had sort of one ready, they then come up with the Grease Gun, which sort of made it all wasted effort and money. Still plays versus Rangers. Could try and... Well, he doesn't have the music for a great, but once the... Uh, no, might be got a retreat there in the end. Overall, I mean, Storm Guy still got good control here, but he's not quite sort of trying to cement it with his you know, medium armor faster, whereas Red Gun can soon go for a Panther or something. In fact, he's going for Orbital all done. Lord, he's actually playing interestingly, and not just waiting out so far, it seems, for a King Tiger. Very interesting. They're very interesting. They have a Red Gun. Fortunately, the engagement ranges up close. Their assault rifles, in this case, with a training. Not really matching up the Rangers with better training and more automatics. In the east here, Rangers are well, being held down here by the MD34. Sandbags have not been finished. Would be a good job there, I think, for Red Guard to finish them off by now. In particular, since he's leaving the MD34 on his own, or at the very least, pull it back towards the Stewart. Again, we're covering up then, in case of vehicular rush. Orbis have done almost down there for the 111th Panzer Brigade there. Yeah, he needs to pull back MD-34. In fact, he might be forced to a full retreat there. There's no real way for it to set up there in a good position. Mortar advancing up a bit further. I mean, overall, Major Storm, guys, Mortar, for use of the chest, been a bit, I think, awkward. Could have been more aggressive and sort of more supportive of his frontline troops. Maybe a bit more smoke there from that one. MD-34 on the way there for the Orbis of Darden, rather than caught up in the open here by them. Quickly, behind some light cover there. 
Dupont and Pioneers advancing there, and here in the center, holding up there, pushing up the west as well. Sturmgeist is... He's actually taking up. He's going for the Major. Good work. All of a sudden, they're catching Rocking out in the open. Needs to get cover in that regard. I mean, compare Sturmgeist for the Red Gun. They both now have access to sandbags, but comparatively, Sturmgeist is not bothered at all with sandbags, whereas Red Gun, again, while not a huge sandbagger, I mean, has actually laid down some of these attempted to it. So, I mean, there's a bit of a difference there between the two. Also, overall, more mines from Red Gun, whereas against Sturmgeist, a bit more lax. But now we got a pack out a bit of a rare sight as well. I mean, pack houses, rangers, orbs and dragon. This is uh, not your usual overcommand vest versus Americans fight, I feel. I mean, obviously, it's still got a bunch of the usual, like, you know, the steward and the captain and the mortar. But rangers, pack houses, orbs and dragon, not so usual. Attempt to cook grenade in this case. Ah, flubbed. Close there for Red Gun Frequencies. They lost that MD-34 there to the Rangers. I mean, right now, though, Major Stormgeist, if you just wait a bit, they can easily call up a Sherman, in which case you can really begin pressuring Red Gun and Fee. But right now, time for the mid-game analysis in terms of damage. Red Gun's head kills wise is it, but not by too much either. In terms of army value, they're pretty close to each other there. Resource float. Some little bit of their head of Stormgeist in terms of points. Hell again. Stormgeist sort of has been rather more in control, but in fact is in fact still in control compared to Red Gun. But again, he's paying a bit the price there versus Red Gun. Again, he's not really doing much than sort of trying to hold the ground he's taking. I mean, he's not making it harder for Red Gun to counterattack. And that's usually one of the things a lot of players tend to forget. You know, no mines, sandbags. But why all of these little tools there can make a huge difference, you know, in when your opponent counterattacks, you know, how hard or difficult it is for him to do so. So that's, I think, a little, you know, worthwhile thing to keep in mind there. And compared to, again, Red Gun is not doing it a lot anymore, but, you know, he's kind of made more of an effort towards that compared to Storm Guys. And has, you know, paid off here in that particular versus that. I mean, in fact, the studio is almost like, you know, a statue, a testament to actually, you know, preparing for the counterattack. It's almost, you know, an avant-garde art piece called, you know, The Art of Preparing for a Counter-Attack by Red Garden 3, part of his blowing up American tanks period. It's a little, you know, commentary there and thoughts on that. But again, I mean, Storm guys need to consider actually his advantage more than use them properly. A show not there would be good, but at this point, I mean, the Red Garden's resource and armor, your tech up there, I mean, the Panther Force is more likely, and that's probably what the Storm guys are thinking, so Jackson might be more necessary initially. I mean, he couldn't theory play for the Pershing, but I feel just represent getting Red Garden a lot more sort of tempo back. I mean, he'd need to bring up then a lot of anti tank guns, you know, and such, sort of, you know, hold it up then. Although, I mean, he's got bazookas and such. I mean, he could, in theory, work, but it's not what I'd necessarily really recommend, in particular, since, I mean, Red Garden does also have a plenty of anti-infantry, like the Orbital Garden, the Fultz Grenadiers, and the Storm Pioneers. In theory, he's still got options. I mean, Falschmjägers, Valiant Assault, Panzerfusilier, Storm Officer, Infrat Sturmgewehr Package, Infiltration. I mean, so I'm not really sure this is going to be the grandest idea there by Stormgast to be placed for the uh, Pershing. I think Jackson flop a uh, Sherman and try to sort of control the fuel points a bit better. They'll work out well for Stormgast. And again, set up sandbags and mines. Prepare for the counterattack. Prepare. Preparations. Oh, you know, worth a lot if you sort of you remember them. And again, that takes some training and so on there. But, you know, work on it and you'll usually sort of be able to sort of do it more automatically. I mean, that's what military training is about in a lot of things, you know, making things you'd normally think about, you know, when you're not, you know, trained to it, you know, stuff you just do automatically like that. Well, I can't, you know, snap my fingers very well, so that rather ruined the point. Anyways, for Red Garden 3, Panzer 4, I think right now would be a pretty good choice for pressure of the infantry, but also seeming keeping safe as enemy armor might force them then to go towards certain options. Also, Doctrine, I think, is really what's needed here for Red Gun. Again, Spec Ops, Breakthrough, Luff, I mean, they're all good in their own ways. I mean, Spec Ops for the Assault Rifles, for the f Future Orbital Garden, Artillery Flares, Command Panthers, and Fragile Grenades, all good. Luftwaffe, Fulch Mix, but also Valiant Assault for his infantry to be able to keep pace. Airborne Assaults, Air Reconnaissance, and this one, Storm Officers, Panzer for this. I mean, there's plenty of options here, really, for Red Garden that really sort of support his herbal counter changes. I think he just needs to choose one. Dollars get out of Panzer 4. Maybe two. 
I'll let you know more. Sam, Max, Bart, Wire, Mind, what he can do to slow down and make the storm guys advance and make it really, really painful for him. Beyond that, though, let's return to the fight and see what happens. I think we've already did it enough here by the mid-game analysis and want some action. Drama. Men screaming as the guts spill out. Well, we have to imagine that one there. I don't think Relic's ever going to be that uh, explicit in the violence of the game. I mean, Fox plays best catching in the mortar crew, actually. Nice uh, sort of sense there by Red Gun sensing that the center was actually open here. Ambulance moving, trying to set a forward retreat point, but in this case, getting a bit disrupted here by the Germans. God damn! I thought this area was supposed to be safe. Major say it was. Major's an asshole. And it's what's me up there clearing out the Major up close. Oh dear, that completely, I think, caught Stormgeist off guard. Completely caught him off guard. Going for the fuel point as well. They're good harassment, but Red Gun again. He's got the eye on the fuel gauge. He's killed the center victory point as well. If he can force a push back here, as we then got a sweep there from Sturm guys. But still, I think it's done his job. They disrupted his plans there overall. With a single score there again, he forced several units to retreat and then caused you know, a lot of manpower to shift from an assault to a defense. And again, that's sort of what, you know, again, hitting pressure points from the single unit can do for you. can just force larger resources to be shifted towards you dealing with a smaller thing at those points there. So well played there by Red Gun. Well played. And again, you shouldn't have to disperse like three rifle squads to just deal with a single foot can do squad. There you go. Captain caught here with the 34 in the Orbital Darden and quickly sent running. Veterans you want for the Orbital. And actually, what would be a really good choice is booby traps. Fox vs. Rifeman. You need to be careful there. Large engagement here, range is moving up. Stuart Pine is taking a hit there from the pack cards. is suffering a bit. The MG34 in sight in the nice house. The Stuart Pine is moving up, range is suppressed. Good work there. He needs to smoke the house there, actually. Cut off the MG34 from suppressing. But do something about it anyway. It's just, you know, don't just get shot by it easily. Panzer IV, they're running for Red Gun Free in the 111th Panzer Brigade, which would have a few Panzer Fours, but I think primarily still Panzer Brigades were equipped with Panthers and Yak Panzer Fours, or specifically the high velocity gun version. Orbs are moving up there. I'm not too sure what he's planning with them there. And we got Aerial Reconnaissance. He's trying to figure out what his opponent is up to. Interesting. Interesting move there by Sturmgeist. But, you know, smokescreen. Oh, he's calling in artillery. Hello. But I still think overall just smoking the machine gun there would have been a lot cheaper. And again, just easing the cheap there with a the mortar. So, I mean, remember sometimes just smoking the machine gun is an excellent option. But there you go. Panther 4 round there for Red Garden 3. Of course, I mean, this one doesn't really perform like an actual model J Panther 4 since that one had a much lower ro turret rotation due to, well, hand cracked turret, which apparently was due to some lacking for specific resources. But generated for that, so they basically sort of made it hand cranked. And all that's a lot of things was cut down on to make it easier to produce, like for example, vision ports and the lights. Reaction's there wiped up with the Panzer IV. Good strike there by Red Garden 3. Rather than a bit of trouble, Panzer IV falling back here. Ooh, trying to crush them here, trying to crush them. Hit anti tank rough goes off there. Pushing them back there, mortars flying all over the place, hit back at base, troops reinforcing, healing. Rangers, rifle and heat, healing up. Sturmpani, take a hit there for mortar, veteran two gained, nasty stuff. Veterans one for the pack howitzer. The Kedner fighting down there. Major Sturmgeist is indeed now playing for the Pershing, the M26. Storm guy seems to be losing a bit of his alacrity here versus Red Garden 3. And again, the small sort of you know, just improvised defensive unit at times is sort of having an effect them Storm guys. More aerial reconnaissance. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. Again, it's always great when a play actually use reconnaissance. Again, the Americans get thanks to the main just you know have easy non doctrinal aerial reconnaissance, which is a surprisingly huge boon, which most players don't use. I mean it's impressive when someone actually makes use of it to sort of figure out well what am I doing? And in this case, then proceeds to completely bollocks it up, and then trying to change to machine gun. All right, guys, intelligence set, nothing ahead. Just let's go. Pew, 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 pew. Ah, crap. 
I mean, I suppose it's very realistic there that when Stormgeist is doing, you know, high up, you know, what's, the, what's there, but still sends the men ahead, I suppose. Anyways, Bing's being caught here by the Panzer IV. Or perhaps he just wasn't paying attention. Back here, Rife need to be healing. We got another try on the way there for Red Garden. Looks like he's planning a King Tiger. I don't know. I think a more another Panzer IV right now would do him better. In particular, I mean, that's possibly the potential purge, in which case the Yak Panzer IV here would be quite nice. Hey, listen up. Listen up. Troops. We're losing a capture point. They're being grabbed. And overall, Red Guns here got a nice map control versus Storm Guys in the first armor. MB-44 and the Rangers, artillery rain down the pack howitzer. Wiping the entire unit there in one sort of salvo there. Quite a loss there for Red Garden. In East Orbs Island here, opening up the rifle out in the open. Storm has pushed back rifle. Good fun grenade here, or possibly the uh, blend cover would be good. And there we go, pushing out for Sturmgeist, M26 pushing, rolling ahead, speeding down the roads for freedom. Panzer IV waiting right next to mine. Not the best waiting position for tank, by the way. Get ready. Send your orders. You know, Otto, I always feel safer when there's a piece of munitions that could explode and do us harm right next to us. I always feel safe. There we go. Person moving ahead. There we got Captain supporting. There we go. Panzer IV pulling back in the face of the armored threat. Fulkers need to retreat. Almost got the folks because they're wiping there, got annihilated. Mortars raining down here in the east. We got MD34 there standing about. Mechanized nice Regiment is going up, but he's at the same time also going for a Yak Panzer. It's actually to know, I mean, for quite some time there, Yak Panzers just haven't even considered, but seems like just recently I'm seeing more and more Pokemon Let's Players actually, you know, considering them as an actual option again. It's not like it's great, but, you know, it sort of works. Now that, you know, the rest of the infantry can actually sort of work to support it, which was sort of one of the major issues with the Yak Panzer for quite some time. And even then I still prefer they just gave it its machine gun, which it actually has stats for, so I would not be surprised if it also just had, you know, the animations all fought ready, to be honest. Oh dear. Poor Fritz's corpse there crumbled over by Pershing. Panther moving up in the west, saying hits from the Zooka there, not good there, not good, Cavalry Red Garden. In East here, Pershing and gaining the Sturm Punita, but without support. Panzerjäger, they're almost done, and there we go, moving ahead there. Also, a fun fact about it, it actually weighed 50% more than the Panzer IV. I think it actually had the same engines, though, which actually meant it was actually rather overloaded to suffer the issues for it. I mean, suspension-wise, but also, I think, just mobility-wise. Couldn't really go nearly as fast as the Panzer IV, and also more likes as it just break down and bog down. Little fun fact there about it as well. Fox is almost another here by the Pershing. Got a bit lucky there, Red Garden. Pushing his luck too far, Sturm Pazzi. Whoa, several poor tactical decisions there, but Red Garden three all of a sudden. Person moves up there, got Yak Panzer could shoot it. It misses though. Friedrich, shoot properly. And there we go, shoots but bounces, I think, in this case. No, oh, actually landed the penetrating hit there. On the Pershing, and that does seem to cause the Sturm guys to fall a bit back there. Next up, as you can see, either tank supported or Jackson. I mean, the Chank would be able to, for example, if you imagine the Yak Panzers here, actually let's briefly pause for it. If the Yak Panzers here, the Persian engaged from the front, but as this is happening, he then sends a tank all the way through here, gets behind the Yak Panzer and sort of wrecks it that way. That would be actually be an option there for Sturm to sort of consider tactically. In the West here, Captain advancing. Orbital along there, taking a crushing hit there. Still no doctrine though from Red Garden. Still no doctrine. I'm not liking this though. I'm not liking that. Obviously needs to fix up the Pershing a bit there. Panzer IV moves ahead, their range is weaponed. But actually can start upgrading with a bazooka. I mean, there's one guy with a carbine, and in theory you can upgrade with another weapon. Perhaps in there, they're firing into the start of the Panzer IV with their bazookas. Taking it slow down there, till it raining down around the Panzer IV, bouncing off Panzer Pershing wing westwards. Their Yak Panzer has now moved westwards as well. Perhaps expect an engagement over there in the west, who knows? And in this case, then proceed to give it away to the American opponent. Then there's a Yak Panzer in the area. Fresh move up here as the armor's all being shifted westwards. Major Sturm guys boldly steps in towards the eastern side of the map there. Panther Force going to need some repairs, but these veterans you want. Pershing pulling back there. Now, of course, where there's a Yak Panzer operating in the area. 
with its high velocity gun. Crew ready. Back to full strength. Eastern side, they need reinforcements, infantry preferably, or the Panzer IV. But what Sturm guys really need to do is bring out some more armor to support the Pershing. I mean, you could easily again go for Jackson or Sherman right now. Now he could go for two Scots right now, which in theory could also work better as the infantry. Just cutting away any infantry support for the tanks, but, you know... Oh, no! Hit a mine there again. He needs minesweepers, actually. That's also what Sturm guys needs. Minesweepers. I mean, really. Those mines have really caused him quite a bit of grief at this point. He might even lose a Pershing to a mine as well now. And he lost to Stewart pretty much because of it. There we go. Panther boy, Yak Panther going. Captain rushing forward. Beerslands need to get out of there. Pershing needs to pull back there. Maybe consider some H wrap rounds. Lay down a smoke screen. Lay down a smoke screen, Sturm Geist. Smoke. Smoke. No, oh dear. It's too late. Yak Panther those cooked up. Their munitions left roasting. Bazooka fire there on the Panzer IV's rear. Right from moving up there. Pershing almost dead, he's really pushing, he's like the Red Garden, he's really pushing it, but he believes in it, he believes in Germany and Kupfsteel. Almost got it there, Virgin G2, Bazooka hits, almost taking out Sturm Pioneers, almost on time from the other side, they're firing grenade off on the right, and doing catastrophic damage in the process, cutting off all the support there for the Pershing, and there we go, Panther 4 gets it, he might even get some more wipes here. There we go, wipes a rifle squad. A cat never moving up. Ambulance down. A point Mortar wiped. Oh dear. He might lose the Panther IV though, but that has been rather catastrophic there for Storm guys. It was in a strong position. Imagine again if there had been a tank to support his person or a tank destroyer. That would have been a look, I think, looked a lot different. Oh no, Captain's forcible away there. Panther IV barely operable. But it's still there. Almost got the pack out, and you've hit supporting. Could allow the Panther IV to shoot an infantry at the very least. Whack the pack out, and made you rushing ahead. Second Pershing out for Sturm, guys. Again, he can easily call in a second Pershing, of course, but again, imagine if he had more armor than the Pershing, he might not need to call in a second Pershing. I mean, that's really also, I think, a bit of logic that seems to escape a lot of players. I mean, what if you did not need to call in a second Pershing because your Pershing was supported by more tanks? There you go, he's rushing straight after the Panzer IV here. He wants vengeance for all the American lives lost to the crap bastard. And there you go, Panzer Faust on the Pershing. He's like shooting infantry. Shatters a wall there. Rubble all over the place. Rangers move up support here. Veteran defeat hit. Fultz goes out in the open, they're being engaged. Almost wiped, they almost wiped. Oh! Annihilated. Yank Panzer more on the way there for Red Garden 3. In the south front, we could consider going some more points. We've got reassurance away there for Storm Guys to help repair his Pershing tank. And we got another Yank Panzer here for Red Garden 3. Another Yank Panzer. Securing the mortar there with the captain. Range going to need some reinforcement there. Capture point is under attack. MG34 then trouble. Victory point was why we got a huge lead there for Sturm Gust. I actually missed that. That's impressive. In the south raft, they need to be careful. They got Vetchin 3 jumps against. They could pop a concussor grenade there. Or not. Plus, the Orbs on Vetchin 3 are also what you'd call a pretty big headache. Looks like they're not going to make it back home for Thanksgiving. I've just got a report of an infantry Dead. unit being wiped out. There we go, saying Yak Panzer. I mean, it's not like Red Gun's got a lot of force himself, but he's down to one Orbs that squad, one Sturm Pioneer, and Indy Fed from like Kevin and on both sides have taken quite a bruising in these engagements. Armor here. A capture point is being overrun. So I mean, you know, it could still go either way in a sense. But it doesn't help that I think that Sturm guys continue to make and he still hasn't chosen doctrine. I mean he's got so many resources. Do something, Red Gun Free, you Lighter. I mean, go for Luftwaffe. Call in an airborne assault. Just, you know, do something. There's no reason to flood all that much. Orbital gun on the way there. 
halfway done. He could also go for this, get some assault rifles. Good hit there on the MP-34 there by the Pershing. Almost wiping it there. There you go, annihilated. Even less there for Red Garden Fleet. Landing several hits on the Pershing. Pershing needs to get away. He would actually soon go for a Sherman supported or a Jackson. Going after it though, he is pretty confident about himself. Get away the Pershing though, pull it back towards the base. Another hit there, that's an HVAP round. He's almost got it, we got a Kedman for moving up. Artillery fire raining down on it. Artillery called in, oh, he's going for an airborne assault. He went for Lutthoff and pinning down the reaction is nearby. Pershing there, facing against no both of the Kedman and Yak Panzer. Captain being suppressed here by something. Oh, that was the airborne assault there. Five Simigas in the mist here, is about to get wiped out. Fighting Jaegers almost taking out the pack out and lands a dozen hit on the Yak Panzer. Pershing pulled back towards the base there. The Kedna for cleared out. Rangers flanking it behind. Red Garden 3. We lost a gun crew. Mortar wiped. Two orbits on our squad here, both flat machine guns. Pershing catching up on some poor fellow. Oh yeah, he Pershing with Yak Panzer. Rangers out in the open versus orbits on there. You go force to retreat. Veteran before, and with this storm, guy surrenders. He might actually still have had a chance, but his spirit is completely broken here by the sudden surge of the Luftwaffe to assist here. So GG, game over. A bit of an interesting fight in some ways. Again, displaying again what a few pre -pre -pre battlefields can do for a player, what a few mines could do, but certainly also not just having more armor on the field can do. Like, you know, also just having a Yak Panzer in these cases. Storm, guys, you know, again, you know, made a few sort of common elementary mistakes, like again, just relying on heavy tanks, not getting any medium armor to support them. Again, had he had, you know, something there, I think battles could have gone a lot more differently. Red Gun on that would have benefited much sooner from actually getting a doctrine out there, to be honest. I mean, if that was way too long, just wait about to do well that. I mean, Storm Ghost played better, all right, but again, he could have used more smoke, could have checked more efficiently, used armor more efficiently as well, I think, and again, mines and sandbags. Again, had he had more sandbags and mines down when he was acting control them out, I think things would look more looked a lot more differently as well there. So that's a few things to consider, but there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned a few valuable lessons from it. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. If not, send any replay of facts and feedback in the comment section. This is Imperial Dane signing off, and see you all tomorrow for another exciting episode. Cheers!